Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review Ghosts of the Ozarks, and this is a folk horror western kind of mashup here from directors Matt Glass and Jordan Wayne Long, and Matt Glass had previously made this into a short film and then adapted this into a feature-length film, and really focuses on this doctor who comes into this town where his uncle lives in this utopian kind of society, and he's trying to figure out, because like this area is surrounded by strange ghosts, this creepy red mist shows up, and these are big horned beasts that show up, these creatures, these demons, and along the way there's a lot of twists and turns trying to figure out what's really going on in this town, and it's interesting because this definitely feels like it might have gotten some influence from some particular films from a particular filmmaker in like the early to mid 2000s and depending on how you might have felt about that particular film this might also have a bit of a feeling towards that as well but, you know, it has some interesting twists and turns and how they bring about, like, the visuals of these, like, supernatural beings and this strange mist. It's cool. It's interesting. It's haunting. It's disturbing. And it really works well in that way. Um, Pacing-wise, this film definitely has some of its slower moments and kind of loses some of its narrative drive moving forward at times. But in general... It fits well in this period setting in this small town, and you have Thomas Hobson, who plays this man at the center, our protagonist, who comes into this town, and trying to figure out what's really going on, witnesses some horrible things. You have Tara Perry, who's a young woman who lives on the outskirts of town, with her brother, who's actually played by pro wrestler Eric Redbeard, which was interesting big, big dude, especially looking at him next to, like, normal-sized people. But they have this attraction and this love story that's kind of going on, which, like, I don't know if that was the most interesting part of this film, but, like, kind of tacking on a love story into it probably wasn't the most inspired choice. You also have Phil Morris, who plays the uncle, who's a very interesting presence in the film as, like, this kind of leader in the community. And... Tim Blake Nelson plays this very interesting, almost blind man. He has a very particular accent as well, and there's an interesting musical number at one point in this film that was really effective, and it was felt so odd in this particular film, but, like, Tim Blake Nelson was definitely having fun. You have David Arquette, who's also in the film, and he does a fine job, but in general, this film does hit on a lot of tropes. Even some of the twists and turns might feel very derivative of some other films that you could tell this might have gotten some influence from. But in general, I think it does a fine job of waving that folk horror kind of ideas of like this paganism in front of the audience, causing some creepy visuals and potential scares along the way. But in general, I think this is a fine genre mashup with some fun characters and some strong performances. Some of the other ones fall a little bit flat. But in general, I think Ghost of the Ozarks is an interesting genre film that has a decent amount to contribute and to give you a fun time, even if it might feel like it overstays its welcome just a little bit. But... Those are my thoughts on Ghosts of the Ozark. Let me know what you think, and let's talk some movies. But thank you, as always, for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.